So I want to briefly go into the Doppler effect and then give you an activity to um, connect your idea of light absorption to the idea of how we measure the Doppler effect from an ast actual astronomical system to learn something interesting. So uh, the Doppler shift in general is probably familiar to you, but maybe you haven't heard the, the name before Doppler shift. Um, but it's basically the idea that when an object is moving toward or away from a, an observer, then the waves that they emit will get squashed or get stretched based on their motion. So in the image here, I've got a fire truck and it is our moving source. And if you're standing here on the sidewalk, a stationary observer, as the fire truck uh, comes towards you, it's actually pressing the waves that it emits closer and closer together because of its motion. And so that causes the wavelengths to become shorter in front and longer behind, all right? So that's what's being depicted in this image here. So from your everyday experience, what is the difference between the frequency of the sound that you hear when the fire truck is approaching you? So when a fire truck approaches, we hear the pitch go up and that does indeed correlate to a higher frequency. But what is happening to the wavelength as the fire truck approaches? Yep, so as it approaches, the wavelength of the sound that it emits, 100% of you are correct, will be shorter. So it will have a shorter wavelength, higher frequency as it approaches, and then longer wavelength, lower frequency as it moves up past you and away from you. And that's why the pitch goes up and then down. So this is something you've probably all experienced in everyday life on the road, but the same thing happens with light. So instead of a fire truck, now we've got a light bulb. And as the object approaches the observer, the same thing happens. The wave peaks get squished together. And so the wavelength gets shifted to lower wavelengths, which is toward the blue. So we call that a blue shift. Um, if an object is moving away from an obs observer, then the wave gets stretched out. So the waves appear longer to that observer. And that's what we call a red shift. And it doesn't matter if this object is emitting in the visible, in the infrared, or even in the radio. As long as the wavelengths are getting shorter, that is called a blue shift. And as long as the wavelengths are getting longer, that's called a red shift. So if you want more of an explanation, um, this video that I've got linked on the slide I'll drop it in the chat. Um, it has kind of a nice walkthrough of this idea. So you can watch that later if you would like. And this idea of the Doppler shift is useful because now um, by measuring the wavelength of light that we see versus what we expect to see, we can figure out which direction an object in space is moving relative to us. So we assume that we here on Earth are Stationary observers, I know we're all moving through space, but from the perspective of other galaxies, we're more or less stationary. All right, so here's an example of Doppler shift. So let's say that I have this reference spectrum that I measure in the laboratory. So this is measured from a hydrogen gas cloud at rest in my laboratory at the University of Oregon. Not really, but you could. Um, and then I'm measuring the hydrogen rich spectra from galaxies a through D here, um, which galaxy is moving away from us the fastest? All right, so I'm only seeing two possible answers now. Most of you are answering A, some of you are answering C, and I want to say that both of those are, I understand where you're coming from. The correct answer is A, and I'm gonna walk out um, exactly why that is, all right? So there's four lines in the reference spectrum that I could choose to follow in their corresponding lines in each galaxy spectrum. Um, but I'm gonna choose this violet one just cause the white arrow shows up best on the violet side. So for choice A, I can see that it is shifted toward the red. That absorption line feature is shifted toward the red end of my spectrum. So therefore I know that it is moving away from me because objects moving away have their wavelengths lengthened. So that's a red shift. Um, if I look at spectrum B and track that line, then it hasn't shifted at all. That means that that galaxy is not moving with respect to our galaxy. If I look at spectrum C, then that line has shifted toward the blue. And so that galaxy is actually moving toward us. And when I look at spectrum D, 
it's also redshifted, but it's not as far redshifted. So it must be moving slower than galaxy A. So both D and A are moving toward us because both of those spectra are shifted toward the red. Um, and A is moving fastest because it's shifted the most. There's an equation that governs exactly how much the shift is and we can get the speed out of that equation. And so that's what we're gonna do now is an activity to measure the speed of Andromeda.